Hello and welcome to the part one of my 2013 Cicada 3301 series. Now unlike my last set, this one actually covers a year that I contributed significantly more personally to, as well as the first of the years in which I was one of the winners, so I'm extremely excited to provide as much context and detail as possible. January 5th, 2013, this image was posted on the B and X boards on 4chan. The new image reads, Hello again, our search for intelligent individuals now continues. The first clue is hidden within this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck, 3301. Now thankfully, due to how many of us have been following along from the previous year, we were expecting it this time. So the beginning is much better documented than it had been in the previous year, including having archives of the initial threads. It was posted anonymously, just after midnight on the 5th of January Eastern Standard Time. Now, I hope you've seen my other videos, as the first few steps here were quite trivial if you tried out the previous year. The image had hidden text added to it steganographically using software called OutGuess. It's run like this. The result was a new PGP signed message shown here. Again, if you followed along, you'll immediately recognize a book code, but I'll include a link to where I explained it in the last set. The message reads, Welcome again. Here is a book code. To find the book, break this riddle. A book whose study is forbidden, once dictated to a beast, to be read once and then destroyed, or you shall have no peace. It didn't take too long to find the book in question. Many of us had heard of The Book of the Law, or Liber al Legis by Aleister Crowley. Crowley believed the book had been dictated to him, and that the text of the book describes that you should take what you can from one reading of it, and then destroy it so you don't try to follow the letter of it. As it states, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Now this reference to Crowley and subsequently the Thelema was one of the biggest influences among those who thought 3301 represented some sort of occult group, even though the reason for this particular choice of book can really only be speculated on. Regardless, following through and making replacements, here's what you get. So obviously, assuming the dashes were meant to be slashes, this URL led us to a download. It was a 130 megabyte file with no extension. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, the file is no longer being served by Dropbox, so I'll include a link for anyone who wants to have their own copy. Uh, taking a look at the header and the hex dump for the file, it became apparent that this was an ISO or a disk image. Booting with it, either with a drive or a VM, provided the following. I'm going to leave off talking about that last message there for a bit, and dive a little more deeply into what this ISO held and meant. There's primarily three things we want to take a look at, one of which the boot will do in an actually running version of this, but we want to look at both the audio and data folders here. Audio gives us the first of two actual songs ever provided by 3301, if you don't count the MIDI puzzles. 761.mp3, or as it would become known to us, the in-star emergence. I'll play a sample of it while we look at it a little bit more closely. There's several tempo changes throughout the song, and some strange sounds included, like those initial cicada chirps. The really interesting part, though, comes when you look at a hex dump of the song, and get the following. It reads, The In-Star Emergence, Parable 1595-277-641. Like the In-Star, tunneling to the surface, we must shed our own circumferences, find the divinity within, and emerge. 
Now, if you're unfamiliar, the slash N in there just indicates the end of a current line and the start of a new one. The ID3 tags of the song list the Instar Emergence as the title, and 3301 as the author. The only major thing revealed by analysis of the audio itself was a strange hum around the 15.4 to 16.1 kHz range. The song itself is 167 seconds long, which is a prime number, as well as its inverse 761, which is also the title on the file. Despite all of these incredibly interesting things about it, there wasn't an obvious use for the song quite yet, so we'll have to move on. Now, the data folder has three files in it. None of them had clear file types, either from extension or during further analysis from the headers in a hex dump, and ultimately they didn't look to be much but random bytes for now. So we'll have to look at the rest in a running version of this. Now, it boots into a small Linux installation using TinyCore, we can interrupt that auto-running script at the start like normal, which just drops us into Ash asking for a login. The user TC, for TinyCore, works with no password, which lets us take a look at the loaded environment. Likely the most interesting section is here, user local bin, which contains four things. Message.txt and message.txt.asc are the text from the end of the sequence. And then of course the same thing, PGP signed, so that we can verify it. Now Prime, Echo, and Cicada are both scripts which make up what we saw when we booted the disk image. Prime Echo is a script that just has hard-coded the Prime sequence up to 3301 to be printed with a slight delay between, with a longer pause on 1033 and 3301. Now Cicada is the script that's actually called at boot. It in turn calls Prime Echo and displays the dot .text, and then reboots the system. If left on its own, it will just run and reboot indefinitely until we either interrupt it or turn it off. Now the other interesting place in here is in temp. Now most of these are just normal system files, but two stand out, Wisdom and Folly. As what seems to be a bit of a clever joke on 3301's part, Wisdom and Folly are functionally identical and both utterly useless. There's no clear file type in the headers, there's no obvious use for them, but they were copies of the same file. Perhaps a bit of a joke on some of the things the Cicada solvers were talking about at the time. Now, this all gave us an incredible amount of things to look at and try to piece together, but really got us nowhere. So it was time to look at that last message we got on the ISO. Now, if you're familiar at all with social media, the at before all of those numbers gave me the hint to look at Twitter users. And sure enough, there was one with that name. It was a freshly made account that coincidentally had started posting around the same time that we solved the book code and got the ISO. Now here's a look at what was waiting for us when we got there, and that's likely where we're going to pick up again for the next video, using that Twitter and all of these different pieces we've looked at to put together the next steps of the puzzle. Until then, good luck!